Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to a another WordPress plugin development video. In uh, part three today, what we're going to be doing is we're actually going to be setting up our design environment uh, to make working on this plugin a little bit easier before we really get into the adding our own actions and filters and hooks and doing some fun stuff with that. What we're going to focus on first is just setting up a design environment. So for somebody who uh, doesn't have has never really done this kind of thing before or is trying to figure out what you could use the first program that uh, I used for a long time not knowing any better and this by the way is the notes of what we're going to cover today was uh, notepad plus plus and uh, it worked for a while when I was a little less experienced but it was hard to debug and it was hard to uh, organize you know organize the files visually in this because it's just like notepad with a little bit of extra features and there's really a better program uh, that you can use for this and that's what we're going to be using today uh, and I talked about this in a video before but we're going to be using Visual Studio Code and uh, this program is excellent for editing anything especially WordPress related but really it's just a great all-around product and we're going to be downloading this and uh, and go ahead and edit in this and then we're going to install the plugin that uh, these kind of have their own plugins too, or extensions is what they call it. And it's gonna allow us to install some WordPress uh, IntelliSense or IntelliPrompt, I don't know. I, I originally learned programming back on, uh, see, Visual Basic 6. So uh, that's kind of where I got the terminology from. I believe it's called IntelliPrompt. And uh, that's it's like this right here, which uh, kind of suggests to you what something is and it can auto-complete for you. So we're gonna go ahead and download this. I'm on Windows, obviously download whatever makes sense for you. And this will take a minute, so I'll come back to you guys uh, once this is done and then we'll take it to the next step. All right guys, so it finished downloading and I'm just gonna kinda walk you through the installer. It's pretty self-explanatory, but let's just do it together. Accepting the license agreement, obviously we can't get by without this. Putting it in its default location that it's asking for. Visual Studio Code at the start, that's fine with me. As far as any of this stuff, this is if you want it. Creating desktop icon, add open with code action to Windows. That's like when you right click stuff and you can open it with code. But in this case, we're not gonna do that. I'm just gonna uh, just leave everything the way that it's defaulted here and run the installer. All right, so everything finished up. We're gonna go ahead and run it. And let's take a look at Visual Studio Code. Now that we have our Visual Studio Code open, the first thing is, uh, well, you get this little welcome email and all that, this little welcome uh, screen. But what we're going to do is we're going to open up the Explorer over here. I'm going to minimize mine a little bit. And this is where our folders, we can open a folder. And it's going to show us all the contents and we can work specifically within that, that little code repository. And uh, we're going to do that with our plugin here in just a second. But first what I'd like to do is I'd like to go into the extensions over here. And we're going to type in, there used to be one called Emmet. Uh, but I think that Emmet is now built in for uh, get, for helping us uh, shorten a lot of our code stuff. Like I'll show you when we're developing HTML, Emmet helps a lot. It helps us just create tags with classes and it's pretty cool. In fact, I'll, I'll show that here in just a minute. But for the first extension, we're gonna go ahead and just type in WordPress and you're gonna see that it's gonna have WordPress snippets and WordPress development toolkits and autocomplete for WordPress. I think what we're going to go for in this particular case is we're going to go for WordPress snippets. And uh, like this says here, it uh, has kind of the Emmet style abbreviations for all functions. Like for example, type GDP for get template function. This is really great. It's going to help shorten down a lot of work when you really get to using and developing WordPress on a regular basis. So we're going to go ahead and put that in there. And now we have that as part of it. And extensions are awesome, you guys. You can do a lot of research on extensions and add tons of cool extensions for Visual Studio Code to give you a, a big hand when you're editing stuff. All right, so if you guys remember, we installed that plugin, that uh, boilerplate template plugin that we got uh, from the boilerplate. Uh, let's see, let me just reopen it just to make sure that you guys remember where we got this from. I just wonder if it's in my auto. There it is. All right, so this is a boilerplate uh, pl plugin for WordPress, and this is what we're going to be starting with to develop our simple plugin. We might do a couple different plugins with it. I'm not sure how far I want to take the series yet, but I know I want to at least help people get started with developing a base plugin. And uh, so this is where we got it from, and we already installed it into our local host. I, as you guys remember, I created an SEO local package that was um, meant to just kind of showcase. Uh, creating starter kits for yourself using Duplicator. But we went ahead and installed, actually let me just log into this thing. Okay, but we went ahead and installed our WordPress in 10 new plugin. Uh, this is from that template, we just changed this in the plugin's name. 
And what we want to do is we want to set our Visual Studio Code folder to that folder so that we can just work on that plugin and we can see all the files and folders just related to the plugin we're developing. And the easy way to do that is to hit open folder. So in our C drive, in our XAMPP folder, we have our HT Docs, and then we have our SEO local. And then remember, plugins are in the WP doc, or dash content, uh, not themes, in uh, plugins. And then remember, we have plugin name, and that's because we didn't change the name, right? So we're going to go into this folder, and we're going to hit select folder just inside this folder. And what you're going to watch on the left here is it's going to open up a new workspace for us. And the awesome thing about Visual Studio Code is now we're only looking at the files and folders related to this particular WordPress plugin. So we don't have to get confused now by hunting around through our files and folders through all the different stuff and getting it confused and having to open it with Notepad. We can open everything right here from one click like this. Now we're looking at the plugin name PHP file and all of this is editable obviously and changeable from right here and also we have all of the uh, all the code properly colored for us so that uh, we're not confused on uh, what things are doing. Like in Notepad++, you can set the color, but it's not as clear as this. This is great. And that's gonna help us out a lot in designing. And then these are your folders. And as you can see pretty clearly, this plugin is laid out in a very specific way. It has the admin section, and this is everything that has to do with your plugin's admin section. From uh, your, your CSS, your JavaScript, partials, this has to do with, uh, it actually says it right in here, this has to this should be the HTML and PHP that has to do with your plugin admin display. This is like if we're creating an admin display area, which we're going to be doing creating admin display area as well for uh, saving data and uh, we're going to be saving stuff to our database and all that and uh, creating some short codes, I think. And uh, everything has an index so that the file cannot be accessed directly by a browser. It has to be accessed by WordPress. And so you have an admin folder. That's everything for the administrative side when you're in the back end of your WordPress. Your includes folder, this is for all of your additional classes uh, through object-oriented programming that we can go ahead and call to. Uh, like there's the activator, deactivator, uh, loader class. Loader class handles loading in uh, our actions and filters like we talked about before. We're actually gonna make a new class that's gonna be called like uh, custom message or something and we're gonna be having it display a custom message maybe like before the content, we'll hook into that or something like that. And uh, then the plugin name, this is where we can actually define, we can call in more dependencies, which is where we're going to create our class and require in our dependency. And we're going to add in our new hooks and all that kind of stuff and our public hooks. And, uh, and then we have our languages folder. This is for um, changing the language of the plugin. I'm pretty sure uh, that's what this is. I, I need to double check it, but I'm pretty sure languages is being able to let people translate it, which is important if you have people who don't, you know, like obviously for me is English. Uh, I also... Uh, took Japanese for two and a half years, so I could translate it to Japanese probably. I'm pretty rusty at it now, but say that I, you know, had a, I was releasing this plugin in Japan, I would do that. Public, this is obviously the plugin phase or the public side of your uh, program or your plugin for the things that requires, like it's JavaScript and CSS and all that for any public facing part of your plugin, which we're going to end up using that as well. Index here, which is obviously just says silence is golden, so it can't be accessed directly. Uh, licensing information, the plugin name, we talked about this. This is where we change all this data and everything changes right here. And then also this has uh, some security features. For example, if this is basically a call that asks if this is called directly, it's going to abort, meaning it's not going to load anything in here. This is for uh, hacking, anti-hacking purposes. And then we have the plugin definition. I mean, I'm sorry, the uh, defining the plugin name and its version and all that. And they recommend that you use Semver, which is kind of a good way to uh, keep your plugin updated with release notes and all that. And then the rest of this stuff is really, really clean code, guys. And also, uh, one thing I wanted to say, too, is that I'm not going to be super hyper-focused on, oh, having the cleanest, shortest code. Or, oh, it has to be perfect, pristine code. Uh, you can do that if you want. I'm primarily just creating this course to teach you how to create a plugin period and how to work with some basic hooks, filters, and how a WordPress plugin really works and how you can create your own to extend uh, your own, you know, to just get a feel for how it all goes together. And so if I write something that's not as clean as it could be, or it's, you know, maybe it's a longer version of doing something, I really don't care about that. And, uh, and it can always be cleaned up later. And I could always, you know, like every programmer, if they want to clean their code or if they want to make it uh, cleaner and cleaner and cleaner for faster and faster, that's fine. And that's, you know, if I developed a basic plugin and I was trying to make it faster or I was trying to get its file size down or something I would do that but I'm not so concerned about that in this particular case. 
And then we have just the README and we have our uninstall. And uh, that's pretty much it for um, for this little basic plugin and getting yourself into Visual Studio Code. Now we have our, our design environment set up. We can now focus on uh, actually starting to uh, build something out of this. And in the next video, we're probably gonna start focusing on our basic hook. I think we're just gonna do a content hook. And in the next video, I'll show you a, uh, a place to go where you can uh, look at all the available WordPress hooks. There's a really great website for this that shows us all the things we can hook into. We can create a custom class and then uh, just hook into those things and register our hooks. And that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna create a place, I believe, where the user can, there's gonna be a, a backend on the dashboard that's gonna have a menu item. And then it's gonna have a thing that says, uh, or a text box that says, uh, input your message to the user. We're gonna input a message. It's gonna save to the database. And then it's gonna output on the page before the content section. We're gonna do that just to show you an example of a hook an action, saving something into your WordPress database and creating an admin page section. And that's a pretty good uh, starter situation because then from there you can kind of start to get an idea of, okay, I know how to create my this uh, admin panel, I know how to save information to a database and all that. So you can actually get a lot more advanced from there pretty quickly. Uh, I think that's gonna wrap us up for part three. I'm just gonna try to keep these short and simple like my uh, introduction to WordPress series. And like, subscribe, uh, and let me know if you guys are wanting anything specific in the plugin series. If there's anything particular that you want me to show as far as the actions or filters or anything like that. And I'll do my best to try to include it in this one or a future one. Uh, once again, thanks for watching, and I look forward to seeing you guys in part four.